I am me, joined together and governing myself. But what if my boss decided I would be more efficient split up? Now replace me with the Middle East and my bosses with the UK and France. Follow the metaphor, because that's the reason we've got such a mess in the Middle East today. A series of lines literally drawn on a map to divide up the spoils of World War I, which has led to hundreds of thousands of deaths and decades of instability. It all started back in 1916, where the Allies were battling the Ottoman Empire in the Middle East and seizing vast tracts of mostly empty territory in what we now know as Iraq, Syria, Israel, bits and pieces of the Gulf states, North Africa and Lebanon. Except back then, none of that existed. What did exist was a whole load of loose provinces based around city-states, tribes and concentrations of different ethnic groups, ruled from Istanbul in relative peace for hundreds of years. Not ideal, but it was peaceful. But this system didn't work for new bosses Britain and France, because many of these provinces were very poor, and now that they were being ruled from a long way away, and in many cases would rather be independent than European, they threatened to cause trouble for the Allies. So what to do? Well, for the security of the region, for ease of governance, and fortunately, in a way that just so happened to give both parties easy access to oil fields, the lines were redrawn by two ambitious young diplomats, Britain's Sir Mark Sykes and France's François-Georges Picot. But how did they split it up? Did they respect traditional cultural and ethnic divides? Well, no, that would be far too complicated and time consuming. Instead, when asked by the British government where he wanted the line to be drawn, Sykes simply pointed at the map and said, I should like to draw a line from the E in Acre to the last K in Kirkuk. That is, France got bits of Turkey, Syria and Lebanon, the UK got Iraq, Jordan and most of Palestine. Screw the Sunnis, the Shias, the Alawites, the Kurds, the Jews, the Christians, the Druze, and everyone else. Your nationality was now brought to you by the letters E and K on a map. Spiffy. In fact, many historians now believe that such an utter steaming heap of a national boundary was in fact done deliberately to keep the tribes separated and to stop anyone from becoming too powerful and demanding any of that pesky independence stuff. Of course, the locals weren't necessarily pleased, leading to a few revolts, such as in Iraq in 1920, in which Winston Churchill advocated gassing the Kurds. Hmm, sound familiar? But generally, for the next 30 years, the system did work. Then came the 1940s. Britain and France basically ran out of money and had to give all of that lovely land in Asia and the Middle East back. And how did we do it? Well, we took those lines in the sand that we created arbitrarily, on a whim, and we stuck with them. Whilst Israel was a slightly different issue, carved out of former Palestine by UN resolution, the borders of the new republics of Syria, Jordan and Iraq remained largely the same. Except now, rather than being given leaders and opposition being crushed, they had to pick their own leaders from one of the increasingly divided tribal, religious or ethnic groups in their now largely impoverished nations. And that caused military coups, and that caused dictatorships and people calling themselves colonel to get into power and cement their own religious or tribal group into a position of power at the cost of all others. And there we have a mess. We have a series of states made up of people who don't like each other, along borders that don't really mean anything, building up their armies against their own people, and funding militias to try and topple their neighbours. Now there's plenty of other things that have caused the Middle Eastern situation. Of course, the ambitions of groups on the ground, repeated wars with Israel, economic strife and the Cold War tactics of both NATO and the USSR, which saw both sides flooded with weapons. Fantastic, what a great idea. But this is at least one reason why we end up with the situation before the Arab Spring and everything that followed. Because of one line drawn on a map. Good work, history. <laughs>